Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, my time at my time at SSF, I had the opportunity to research um, the reduction of sepsis mortality in type two diabetes patients um, who have prior statin usage before they come to the hospital. Um, I'm a rising senior at Tesla STEM High School. So before I actually get into my presentation, uh, the reason I decided to research this topic was just as I was kind of reflecting on my own experiences, uh, my grandpa passed away from sepsis last September. Um, and you know I knew that he was a diabetes patient, so I wanted to see if there was any connection between those two things. And when I found that there was, um, I wanted to see what kind of treatment options are out there and like what other research has shown in terms of treatment. And so what I did find is that anti-diabetic medications have been shown to reduce sepsis mortality in diabetes patients. Now, there are quite a lot of diabetic medications. Um, the one that I found most commonly was metformin, which is more for blood sugar. So I decided to research a different medication called statins. It's just a category of drugs. And they're more for, you know, like lowering cholesterol. And so the importance of this topic is just that mortality from sepsis in general is just high. And if a patient goes into septic shock, the mortality rate is actually between 30 and 40 percent. So it's definitely something that, you know, we should find more treatment options for so that p patients are um, saved. And so again, the aim of my study is just to determine whether prior usage of statins can reduce sepsis mortality in type 2 diabetes patients. So for some background just about what sepsis is, and um, you know, its relation to type 2 diabetes. So sepsis is just your body's intense response to infection, which usually starts because you contract a different type of infection, like a UTI or something, which is a urinary tract infection. And so it occurs in stages, which makes it a little bit harder to diagnose because there's not one thing that can indicate that a patient has sepsis. Um, and if, you, if a patient gets closer to septic shock, it can lead to organ failure and organ dysfunction. And you know, as I said before, septic shock mortality is pretty high. And so in terms of why I chose my, uh, my population to be type 2 diabetes patients is because their type 2 diabetes patients are more susceptible to infection. Um, and again, those anti-diabetic medications do have some underlying properties that could be protective against sepsis. So this figure here kind of just shows like the um, pathology of like diabetes and sepsis. So both sepsis and diabetes induce inflammation, um, which can then lead to endothelial dysfunction, which is just the endothelial cells are around your organs. So that can then you know, induce organ dysfunction, like I mentioned before, and just lead to a poorer survival outcome overall. Now more about statins, so that is just a category of medication. It's mostly prescribed to patients who have a higher risk of cardiovascular disease because they do lower um, cholesterol in the body. Um, and so this chart here kind of shows the different types of statins and you know, in terms of what the patient needs and, and like lowering cholesterol, you would prescribe a different type of statin for them. And so, yes, they do lower cholesterol, but more related to sepsis, they do have some anti-inflammatory and immunomodulatory um, properties. So that is why some of these research articles research that. So my research question was, can statin usage reduce the mortality of type 2 diabetes patients who contract sepsis? And after kind of researching a little bit more, my hypothesis became that statins do definitely have some underlying properties that can provide protective treatment against sepsis and then thus reduce mortality. So more about my methods in general, um, the timeline of the articles that I found was between 2007 and 2023, and most of the studies that I used were just like cohort studies, so they studied patient data between 2007 and 2020. And so I did exclude some articles because they either didn't indicate anything related to type 2 diabetes patients or adults, or they didn't have good records of the medications. And I used mostly systemic reviews, cohort studies, and meta-analyses. So as for my first most important finding in this article, so this was a cohort study and 25.6% of the patients were statin users. And most of the patients were taking more high intensity statins to treat um, their diabetes or their cholesterol. So this graph here compares survival probability to days of admission in the hospital between statin users and non-statin users. So the top line is the statin users and the bottom is non-statin users. So you can see the p-value here on the graph is 0.003, which like many of my other interns have um, explained, that does in indicate that there's a significant difference between the survival probability of the statin users and the non-statin users. 
And some other p-values that I also found in this study, so they did find that between the two groups, there was a significantly lower 28-day mortality in statin users, and then there was also a lower average bandemia and bilirubin in the statin users compared to non-statin. So bandemia is actually an early indicator of sepsis, which is why I've included that data point here, um, and it's just... Um, released wet by the bone marrow. And then bilirubin is a, a, a yellow pigment in your blood that's released when your red blood cells break down. And so that can also indicate organ dysfunction, which again is part of sepsis. So this second study was also pretty important. Um, the two data points on this table indicate uh, support like my previous hypothesis. So here, Diabetes patients without complications um, were alive at 30 days, and the study also had like a data point that showed that most of their diabetes patients were taking statins, which is why I thought it was important to highlight that. And then also down here, you can see that statin users were, there was a significant difference between those were, who were alive at 30 days versus died within 30 days. Now, I did uh, review a couple of other articles, so this is sort of just a more summary of most of my results. So in general, all of the articles did show significant difference for reduced sepsis mortality in uh, type 2 diabetes, patient, diabetes patients that were taking statins. And this AHR value is just a adjusted hazard ratio. And in this specific type of statin called Pitava statin, that was the lowest. So that was the lowest risk for patients and the lowest mortality rate. And then I also actually found it interesting that a couple of articles overlapped and found that the optimal dose range to reduce mortality was about 0.84 to 0.86. So that could also just help in general with medication. Now, I did talk about metformin before, which has a lot a lot more research than statins about, you know, prior usage and sepsis mortality. But I noticed that there were two articles where the odds ratio, which just, again, shows like the... Um, likeliness to die from sepsis. So metformin was actually 0.74 and then statin was 0.52. So it might show slightly that statin is more effective, but we do need quite a lot more research on that. So in conclusion, prior statin usage definitely does reduce sepsis mortality in type 2 diabetes patients. And like I said before, if we compare it to metformin and maybe other medications, statins may be more effective. But we do need more clinical trials and more research about that before we can reach a more sure conclusion. And so that's kind of what I've included in future research. Also, I found that metformin and statin are commonly prescribed together. So maybe there can be some future research about the combination of those and how that affects the results. Um, these are my references, and thank you to Dr. Peer, my fellow research interns, all the staff at SSF, and my parents. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Yes? Yeah, when you were looking at the mortality rates with sepsis, um, how, what were you coming across in terms of the data showing undiagnosis or of diabetes? Uh, uh, patients that had not previously been diagnosed with diabetes oh, going into surgery or going into the hospital, but then ended up with um, died from sepsis later and having an undiagnosed underlying diabetes. So that's actually an interesting question. Um, the mortality rate that I talked about, that was the just overall like rate that I found. So that's definitely something I would think about researching in the future, just if the patient did have undiagnosed diabetes, which that could also indicate that they don't, they haven't been prescribed any of the anti-diabetic medications. So that could definitely, based on what I know right now, um, uh, increase their mortality. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.